Hello, welcome back to Funtime Crafts 24-7. This is a let's make video. And what we're making today is a wall decor piece. Um, this is probably going to be a really long video. Um, if you want to see what it looks like, I would zoom to the end um, to see what it is we made to see if you want to come back and uh, watch the um, making of it and then so you can remake it yourself. Um, all awesome. Um, otherwise, uh, if you just want to hang out and um, see what we end up, uh, see what we're making, uh, that's all well and good too. Um, so basically, um, it's almost summer here. We're above zero. Um, so that's really good. Definitely better than negative 21. And so, yeah, it's like 19 degrees today. So definitely on the summer trend of things into well into spring, I guess. And, um, I just got a new, um, I'm so excited The I love to garden and uh, all types, whether flower or vegetable or whatnot, uh, landscaped or raised beds, whatever the case may be, um, pots, you name it. Um, I, I like all aspects of the gardening uh, world. Anyways, the one thing I don't like to do is start seeds. I, it's never been my thing. Well, I was watching Laura on Garden Answer and, um, she had this Mesto uh, pump continuous sprayer that I thought, hey, that is really cool. I bet that would really amp up the game on seed starting. And so I ended up going online and uh, finding that sprayer. And while I was looking for it, there was a battery operated one. And um, you just charge it with a USB cable and it's like a push of a button. It holds two liters. Oh my goodness. The thing is fantastic. I'm so, so excited. And that was all because I said it was spring, <laughs> but I just got it today and I like tested it out at lunch and I'm so excited about, um, it, being able to start seeds here in like another month. Oh my goodness. That is going to be so stinking fun. So unfortunately, if it works as well as it did in my kitchen sink, I'm probably not going to have as many videos because I'll be doing much more gardening with the seed starting thing, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, if it kaputs and dies, you'll see videos. <laughs> Anyways, so what we're actually making today is we are, wow, a total bunny trail there. We're going to make a um, wall decor piece that is a rosette. So what I want to do is look at this cute little Valentine punch. This is an EK Tools punch. You could probably get this at Joann's or you could probably get it on Amazon, eBay. It's been out for a while. I collected a whole bunch of like border punches and stuff when I first started crafting like a few years ago. And Joann's is always the place to get these. Like you just type in punch, border punch on their website. And generally for the most part, when I bought these they would just list a mile long of just all these beautiful punches. And so if you wait for sales or coupons and stuff, that's like the legit way to buy these. But if not, they're actually a pretty decent deal. They're about $12 roughly for each of the different punches. And these are so fun. And look at how cute that is, right? With the little scrolls and the hearts. Perfect for Valentine's Day. So I like my theme for Valentine's, not really meaning to, but it just ended up that way, is like rosettes. <laughs> and so I've been making like several different little rosette um, wall decor pieces. And I made a banner, a couple big ones to hang next to my TV. I made a couple that were like these pocket ones and that's actually what I'm going to replicate for you today is um, one of the pocket ones I made and it came out really stinking cute. So basically what you need is you could either score by hand or you could use the Anna Griffin rosette folders. I highly recommend these only because they're the anniversary paper tricks folders. They go so stinking fast. You can just either get it on her website, AnnaGriffin.com, maybe HSN. Or some other sites, I think like scrapbook.com has some of her stuff. I've seen Michael's Might. Ugh. Maybe just type in Anna Griffin Anniversary Paper Tricks folders. Um, and they'll should come up. But these are the big ones. They do the scrapbook size paper, the 12 inch paper, and up to I think these are like five and a half inch wide. Um, wait for it. Oh, five and three quarter inch wide. So a five and a half inch strip works perfectly in these. Um, what I'm going to put through mine is, well, actually, we're going to do a couple things. So let's just go ahead and start. So I'm going to punch. This is an eight and a half by 11. So I've grabbed out some paper. 
Um, and I have, this is Stamps of Life, a strawberry curd stock. It's eight and a half by 11. I've got two pieces of that because I need three strips. And I don't think I could get it out of one sheet, but we'll see. No, three, six, nine. No, we can't. So I need a third, a second sheet. I have Anna Griffin's uh, 12 by 12 uh, white pearlescent cardstock and also her ivory plus a scrap because I'm going to um, do something with the pocket. So because um, we're also using the pocket dies. So you'll need some a punch for your border or. Um, you could add a border punch die if you the, if you have the um, crop at home border dies that are the 12 inch ones. You could add that. That would work really good too. Add a border to the edge of it. Um, I'm also using. Um, I think this is an A4, but it's like a. It's like an eight. It's an it's an eight and not quite eight and a half inch by about an eleven and three quarter inch uh, embossing folder. Um, I got this off of Amazon. I think it's A4. Um, I'm going to use some vellum, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to use the Anna Griffin uh, Corner Pocket Dies. This one right here. Um, it's the biggest one out of these, the Corner Pocket Dies. Look at aren't those so pretty? Yeah. This one right here is the one we're doing. That one, isn't that beautiful? Um, comes with these inspirations when you get the dies. And then uh, tells you how to use them on the back uh, through the Empress, her her die cutting machine. And then um, I think, oh, and then um, I'm also going to be using some Spanish moss. Got this on Amazon. You can get it at Joann's though, uh, Michael's. I'm also going to be using some of this wedding decor. Um, if you just type in um, wedding floral embellishments, wedding, um, yeah, it's like floral embellishments, bead trim, um, wedding decor pieces, um, this stuff comes up. And so this is like a little jeweled stem. And then these are little, uh, pearl, uh, circle strands. They're really pretty, but we're going to use these as accents in our, basically what we're doing is we're making a bouquet of flowers with the corner pocket and putting it on a rosette it's going to be really pretty and then we're going to use some of this iridescent trim as our hanger really really pretty and so you need that 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 some score tape probably and um i think that is about it that's about it that's what i'm using today so let's go ahead and get started and how you use these ek tool punches if you line up the edge of your paper to the top edge like there is a decorative, the same um, image that gets punched out in the center um, is also the same in, image on both sides. And what you're going to do is you're going to start your paper and line it up on the edge right here and butt it up to the back edge piece there. And you're going to just punch. So line it up here and on. make sure it's pushed to the back and punch. And then what you want to do is you want to take and you want to line up the decorative punch with, um, with actually, I'm going to go to the other side because I always like to go back left, then go all the way right. You're going to line this up, uh, make it match to where it's all silver. And then you're going to punch this side. And then you're going to ticker tape down. That's how I like to do it. And then I go back here. And so then I go ahead and I'm going to line up that with the middle there. You're just lining it all up like that. Making sure that you can't see any of the white. It's all silver. And and you're just going to you're just going to ticker tape it down and keep punching it all the way down. So let me finish punching this and I'll be right back. Okay, so now you should have um, something that looks like this and um, all these pieces that got punched out look at they're so cute there are these cute little swirly things if you have the same punch and it punched out a whole bunch of little tiny hearts you could actually use all this for confetti if you wanted to keep it and make a shaker card with it or something uh, some type of shaker item that would be really fun um, but you don't have to save them if you don't want to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to cut this a strip out that's three inches wide. So from the edge of my 
punched detail um, here. I'm going to go three inches. And so it's going to be 11 by three inches. And I'm going to do that three times. So, um, like, let's just cut this really quick. I'll show you really fast. Um, like this. I'm going to get three of these strips. Oops. I don't know what I did. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, so I'm going to make three of these. These are three inch by 11. Okay, and I'll be right back. Oh, farping Nugan. Oh, I did this totally wrong. I should have embossed it. Oh, bummer, dude. You want to actually emboss this first. Um, well, let me just see what happens. Let me, I'm going to emboss this and this at the same time. Because these do a whole sheet of paper for the most part. No, actually it does, it does uh, a, 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 a European paper, which I think is like eight and a quarter by 11 and a half or something. Um, okay, well, I'm going to emboss this, see what happens. And then I'm going to emboss this. And if I have to redo it, this one, because this is too delicate of a detail, um, when I emboss it and it messes it up, I'll cut three more. But I'm going to go ahead and emboss this and do three of these. I'll be right back. Okay, look, it totally did it. Not a big deal. And like, how fun is that? Now it's embossed and it has that great punch detail. Isn't that fun? So I went to emboss this and um, Buddy scratched at the same time. So it was like super convenient. But oh, yeah, there he is again. Oh my goodness, hold on. Uh, anyways, so when I went to let him out, I go out of my craft room and there's this entire tribe of squirrels. Like, all over the hall he got this cute he got the cutest little like it's this big stuffed tree and it has all these squirrels like it comes with a bunch of squirrels and then it comes with spare squirrels well we just gave him all of the squirrels we stuffed all the squirrels into the big puppy tree and um so now whenever he gets like rambunctious he gets that big tree and he shakes it everywhere and all the squirrels squirrels just goes flying everywhere and it just looks like squirrels are taking over and just tribes of squirrels going through your entire house it's so funny they're like all over the living room all over the hall because we got a bunch of the little extra squirrels it was so funny but anyways yeah he loves carrying around the little squirrels oh here let me show here let the people see your squirrel see aren't these the cutest and they have little squeakers in them. They're so cute. Here you go, bud. He's the cutest little thing ever. He's a 96 pounder. He was up to 100 pounds and the vet was like, he's too big. But he's not really that big. He's actually kind of tiny. Look at him. Hi. Hi, YouTube. But anyways, he's not fat or anything, but the vet was giving us a bad time saying he was fat. And so we've been, he loves to jump. So we've been putting toys in the tree and he jumps and he gets them out of the tree. And so when we went back, um, this last uh, vet checkup, um, he said he lost a couple pounds and he looks great. So we're pretty excited. He's doing awesome. Oh, here, let me finish punching these. I'll be right back. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and run these through. Uh, the embossing folder so after you get them all embossed and punched um i was kind of thinking about putting some gilding polish on the top of these um some gold g gilding polish i think i might let's see what it looks like first on here hold on one second we might put an extra detail okay i got some enchanted gold gilding polish uh it looks like this Metallic gilding polish. You can get this on uh, at joggles.com, scrapbook.com, joann's.com. Michael's, I think, has them. Joann's has them for sure. Scrapbook.com has them. Joggles definitely has them. Um, and the most variety I found was at joggles.com. But I just take my finger. There's technically a brush in the top of this. Um, but I don't know if I want to commit to that much yet. And then you're just going to dip your finger in and you're just going to rub it over the top of the embossed detail and see if you like it. So this is a fun one because it looks white and then it reflects gold. It's it's pretty cool. Um, do I want to have that? What do I think about this? We want to see. Do we want to go this like vintagey, antique looking? Um, and the lighter you are, the less likely you you are to get it. the The lighter handed you are, the less likely it will get down into the detail. Um, it'll be on the bottom of the detail. You can keep it at the top. The lighter, the lighter you do it. Um, and I think I do. I think I like it. I think it's pretty fun. Um, 
So I think I'm going to go ahead and run some gilding polish over these. Let them dry because uh, this stuff dries really nice and then emboss them. So let me do that. Uh, let me gild them, uh, put the gilding polish on them and then run them through the embossing folder and I'll be right back. I should show you too. Um, these dry pretty crispy, uh, the little sponges, the applicator that's in the top of the lid. And, um, if you actually, though, if you just start using them again, they actually, um, soften up. The gilding polish softens up on it, um, the more you use it. Um, but then it'll dry out again and then you have to start all over. But I just dip it in and then I scrape it off the edge of the jar and then you just hold it flat over the top of the embossed detail and you just lightly... Uh, rub it over the top and the more the more you rub it over the top of the embossed detail um the darker the gilding polish will be and right isn't that going to be a fun like antique little vibe there that's going to be so pretty uh when it's finished and the nice thing about the flatness of of uh, the sponge on this the applicator is it's not getting, it's just staying on the embossed detail, not going down into it like it was with my finger. Well, not as bad anyways. And so, yeah, pretty fun. So let me go ahead and uh, finish getting this done and it, then let it dry. And it, and it just takes a second to dry. It doesn't, it doesn't hardly take any time at all um, to, to dry. Oh, whoops. Try not to, I had to be really careful about my little detailed edge there. Um, but anyways, yeah, let me finish these and emboss them through the rosette embossing folder and I'll be right back. Okay, so if you are impatient like me and uh, I accidentally did the last one I did first and through the embossing folder, um, this will actually just wash off with a little baby wipe or something, a little touch of water. You want to do it right away so it doesn't, you know, become permanent. But yeah, and then um, I went ahead, I went ahead and... Um, uh, did two at the same time because it, it does a good job doing that but look it smashed out all my other detail uh, because I did do the two did this one yeah I did two together so it smashed out all the embossing detail um, but because we did it we we etched it with the um, gilding polish it still looks really cool uh, but if you if you do them one at a time you still have some of the embossing if you do it like me, mer, <laughs> it smashes it out. So don't do that. <laughs> do them one at a time. Take your time. <laughs> but I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, we're just going to keep rolling along here. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and... Um, well, here, let me finish washing this off. I'm just using a baby wipe here to get this stuff off. And um, it, yeah, it doesn't hardly take anything at all to get it off it it cleans up really nice okay that looks pretty decent huh yeah that looks good right okay cool i'm glad you guys think so too uh it makes me feel better <laughs> so now what you want to do is you want to fold each of these um uh, like a so and don't forget the little end pieces like that be very delicate though with those you know um but don't don't pay too much mind to them uh, because they're going to kind of do their own little thing because they're so delicate. Um, unless you're doing like a scalloped one or an Anna Griffin border one. Some of Anna Griffin border ones, her borders are pretty delicate though. So you want to be careful with the edges as well. Um, yeah, but you're just going to fold, fold, fold. And in one of them, you want to start opposite. So I started both of these down. So this last one, I'm going to go up. And the reason I'm doing that is because on one of the connection points, it'll make it nicer uh, to start. They'll connect up just fine. Okay, and then squeeze it and boom, done. Now you need some score tape for this part, but I would use quarter inch. Since these are half inch, um, like, or three quarter or something, they're bigger than a quarter. <laughs> I would just do this. Uh, put put some score tape and some glue on one of the tabs. And then you want to grab, since this is a little tab, you want to grab a big, a big tab here. Well, it's, it's your, oh, this was the same one. Oh, maybe I should have done them all that way. Oh, I should have done them all that way. Oh, they came out actually perfect. Um, okay, never mind. That was a lie. If you're using eight and a half by 11, do them all the same and they come out perfect. Whoopsie. 
That's okay. We'll just go back the other way. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Squish, and we're done. Okay, and we need glue um, for this. I shouldn't do it on my pretty paper. And then you're just going to connect them up. Like so. And then I got a trick. I hope it's still a trick. I hope it still works. Like for this one. Um, but you know how when you're going to put, um, like, try to lay a rosette in, and then you're trying to get the centerpiece on it? Well, I discovered that. If I use one of my Sweet Petunia sticky mats, you could probably do it with a, um, you could probably do it with, like, your uh, Scan and Cut mat, especially if you're doing a big rosette, or you could do it with uh, your, your Cricut mats um if i push the rosette down onto the cricket mat or onto my sweet petunia sticky mat it held it it did so stinking nice um for holding it and then i could just peel it back up once once i got all the uh, the center piece on it and everything like that i could i could pick it back up and um flip it over and it just made it so nice for centering up the the uh the centerpiece for it. I don't know what that middle piece is called, but it was really nice uh, for being able to, um, it was really nice for being able to get that all centered up really nice and stuff. Okay, so now don't forget about attaching these. If you have a delicate one, you want to make sure to attach these little pieces as well. Oh, gross. Don't look at my it, my bottle. It's hideous. That is not cool. Sorry about that ugliness. That schmutziness. Where's our connector pieces? We have to get our connector pieces joined. Don't look at it. It's gross. Oh, Josie grossy. Oh. oh, John's out plowing. We got a smattering of snow this morning. Okay, here, watch. Let me show you this right here. Oh, but we forgot to get our centerpiece. Well, hold on. I'll show you this technique, and then I'll get my centerpiece. But watch this. See how wily this is? And then it wants to pop up, right? See, it wants to pop back up. If This is one of those mice... My sweet petunia sticky mats, sticky grid mats, and probably your scan and cut or your um, your cricket mats will do the same. But if I put this push push this down onto the sticky mat, you can actually it holds it. Isn't that terrific? It, like totally holds it. So you can like get your pleats all nice, and you can pick them up and move them around. And get it like where you want it. To make sure they're all like nice and even. Isn't that great? And then you just. Once you get it like where it looks like really nice to you. You just give it a good. See that's a bit off to me. Okay there. Then you just give it a good press onto the sticky mat. And it holds it. Until you want to put your um. Until you put your, not want to, until you put your circle on. I squished that one. Boy, that didn't come out so good. Uh, it's because one of these got folded taller than the other. But you're not going to see that by the time we're all done with this thing. You're not going to see any of that. So, okay. So, I think, I think good enough for now. I'm going to, I'm going to let that go. Okay, good enough for now. So, now what I want to do is, um, yeah, but isn't that terrific? Then you have time to get your piece that you want to glue on there. So, um, yeah, and there was a piece I peeled this off the top of it. it that, that makes it, keeps it nice. So I have these con uh, square cartoon compendium dies. And I'm going to use, I'm actually going to cut two. I'm going to cut the largest, um, the largest out of ivory and then the second one out of ivory. Um, but this one's for the back, 
And then this one is for the front. Isn't that going to be so pretty? Out of ivory. Let me cut these out of ivory. I'll be right back. Okay, so I did uh, the little one out of ivory and then the large one. And I cut this one without the shim. And it did really nice. This one I accidentally left the shim in. But I'm just going to hot glue that down. And you're not even going to see this by the time we're all done stacking stuff on it anyways. So I'm not going to worry about that. And I got to put this one on first because it is the top. So... Um, yeah, and I got my hot glue gun. That's what I'm going to attach it with. So I'm just going to go on the very outside on that piece that needs, you know, to be put back together. Um, just with a little bit of glue. And then the very inner, or the very outside. You don't have to do the interior because obviously there's nothing to adhere it to. But now this is going to give me a, a chance to really line this up where I want this to go. And then... Yeah, scooch in whatever I need to scooch in and do all the things. So, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. And um, we're just going to let this um, set up here really quick. And, uh, what? Is there a no? What is going on? Why isn't that attaching? Huh. My glue must not have been... If your glue is not hot, ugh, stuff does not like to work. Especially if you live in a very cold climate. It gets grouchy. Yeah. Okay. Ready, set. And for the interior. There we go. There, okay. There we go. Okay, now I can take this off. Oops. Ta-da! Oh yeah, barely got it. Look at... <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, let's see if we can get a little more uh, substance to attach to this one. Uh, now that it's hotter, too. I need another glue stick. Hang on. Yeah, this is hot now. But there again, we only need the outside. There we go. Right? Looks pretty good. And now we got a beautiful decorative piece for the back. So that's going to be really nice. Let that set up for a second, and this is going to be good to go. And see, isn't that looking great? Take off some of the cobwebs, right? Isn't that so pretty now? Like, it looks really cool, and look at how fun it is with that, with the gilding polish. You know, it's all shimmery and stuff, so pretty. So now what I want to do is, I'm going to turn this off for a second. Uh, I want to go ahead and pop my little cover back on my sticky grid sheet so it doesn't get gross and not work anymore and what I want to do now is grab my pocket dies and these like I said corner pocket by Anna Griffin um, maybe on her website or something I'm going to use this one and I'm going to cut this out in metallic and then what I want to do is I want to cut it out in uh, I want to cut out a piece of vellum And then I want to cut a, what are we going to do? Um, let me cut this out and then cut out a, I need a piece of, that's not going to work. I need like a, I'm going to cut out a piece of vellum that is, whoops, that is five inch square piece of vellum. I'm going to do that and cut this out and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I got my 5-inch piece of vellum, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to glue it to the back side of the pocket. And so I'm going to run tape. Oh, not this stuff. I want 8-inch uh, score tape. Uh, you could do glue or whatever you have. I'm using Sukwing score tape. And doing it... I'm not doing it to the tab. I'm actually doing it to the inside uh, layer of 
the um, pocket. And then I'm also going to do right here on the back. On that half circle there. Or quarter circle. I'm going to do on that piece as well. But not on the tab. Not on the tab. Oh yeah. Okay. And then. Let's see here. I'm just going to go around this circle detail right here. And this is just so the. This holds it. It it holds the vellum to it to make it like really nice. So then what I want to do after I burnish it down, peel it off, and then I'm going to attach that square, um, five inch square piece of vellum to the, to this piece. And there's a, like a nice smooth side and then a more textured side. And I'm going to put the more textured side on the inside. And I'm just going to go from that embossing line to that embossing line. There, like this. And then just press down. And now to get my, um, to get my tabs to fold really nice, I'm going to take and I'm going to put the this like nice sharp edge of on my Tim Holtz ruler from corner of embossing line to corner of emboss score line. It's actually a score line. And then I'm going to just fold up towards the ruler to get a really nice, uh, pristine, really prominent crease on that tab. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure to keep my um, rounded uh, top detail piece where it's all pretty. Uh, here so I'm just going to trim my vellum to where it matches the roundedness of the top there um, just by hand there and that looks pretty cool to me and now what I want to do is I want to hold this up to um, and I'm going to like use my fingers and I'm actually going to wrap it into a cone shape because I want it to be like a little like it's it's holding a bouquet of flowers. I want this to like hold a like it's holding a bouquet of flowers on the front of my um, on the front of my um, really fun little a uh, rosette here. Let's see. Yeah. How let's let's see how. How far in? And I'm trying, I am actually trying to cover up the doily back there or that die back there. I don't actually want it to um, show back down here. So I'm just holding, I'm holding it in um, enough to where, okay, and then I'm going to measure it. And it's about five inches. So I'm going to cut a five inch square. Hold on, I'll be right back. Of ivory cardstock. Uh, I'm going to cut a 5 inch square of ivory cardstock. And I'll be right back. Okay. So now I know I want this to be a cone. So to get my triangle to fit back here. Um, I did. I want it to be 5 inches. So what I'm going to do is to get my shape. I'm going to measure at the top. In the middle. So of this 5 inches. So I'm going to go 2 and a half inches. So let's measure it to the middle. So five inches, so two and a half inches, two and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, diagonally from that point to this corner and from that point to this corner. And that's going to give me my triangle. Hold on one second. Okay, so now that I have my triangle, uh, what I want to do is um, the part that has little marks on it, I'm going to put towards the back. I'm going to slide it back here. And now that I got the shape that I want, I need the length of the triangle piece. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it in the size that I want it to be, right, um, to where it looks cool. This looks cool. And I'm just going to mark it. I'm going to put a mark there and then a mark there. And then I'm going to put this on my, um, on my uh, paper trimmer and I'm just going to cut that off. And uh, that's going to be the piece that we use there. So hang on one sec. Let me trim that off. Okay, there we go. And we got it. And that is looking pretty cool to me.
So now what I want to do is on the back side of this triangle piece, I'm going to go ahead and put score tape on the two uh, sides. Um, and I could probably, I'm going to go ahead and use eighth inch. I'm hoggling it on anyways, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to use eighth inch to hold the tabs for now. And then we'll put the hot glue on it and it will hold it even more. So this is the back side. And so what happens is, is those tabs wrap around onto, onto this piece here. So you're going to hold this on the back. And actually what you could do is just do one side first. Just hold it where it lines up and then fold the tab over on it like that. And then you wrap this over, push this into the score line, and then fold this piece over onto it. And then use your bone folder and finish uh, adhering it down like that. Just like that. And then you can also do it. Uh, go ahead and burnish it really nice on the other side as well. And then ta-da! Isn't that great? And now all these little pieces that are sticking up, just use your finger and curve them into the shape that you want the cone to be in. And see like this one sticks up a little bit. And then that way this, it just won't get caught. It'll be just so much nicer. And we could have actually colored this vellum if you don't, if you want it to be something else. Like we could have colored this with alcohol markers, the back of the vellum. Like I could have turned this pink and that would have been really fun. I would have just used an alcohol marker on the back here and I would color the whole thing in pink. And that would have made a super fun, you know, um, extra little bit there as well. But we're going to use this like this. So I'm going to turn my glue gun back on. Um... And now what I want to do is, um, let's see, let's grab this guy and this. I'm going to line this up all the way at the bottom like that. Um, and I'm going to hot glue it on just like that. But you have to pick what you want to be the top, what it is you want to see um, the most. So actually right there looks really good to me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put mine like this. And I'm not even going to line up. I'm just going to line up. Make sure that I can't see the circle on either side of my cone. And make sure this is at the bottom of the circle there. Um, and probably not even lining up with anything. As uh, far as... Yeah, I think I'm just going to center point it there. And not worry about the top. Um, for like the hanger bit. Because we can always manipulate that to work for us. So, hot glue on the back. Oh, but actually, I need to go on top of a ridge. Never mind, it was a lie. We're going on top of a ridge. <laughs> what ridge? I don't know. This one. Oh, that's why I was hiding that. Shoot. Nope, it is just going to be what it is. Never mind, it was a lie. There. I'm going to go there, and now I want to press on the inside. Um... I was hiding there's a funky bit down there where they connected that I'm hiding. <laughs> I didn't like how it turned out. <laughs> okay, well there. Okay, now all that's left is to fill this with flowers. Woohoo! Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to get my moss and I want to start filling my little cone. Because my flowers are actually going to sit on top of this. On top of this pretty little um, Spanish moss. So I'm just going to do this. And uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that um, I have a proper amount in here. A good amount. That looks nice. And to me this looks nice. And then what I want to do is I want to hot glue it in here. Yeah, I think that looks cool. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue around the inside like that. And then pop my little cone of peat moss back in there. Uh, so that way it will want to stay inside. 
like that. Okay, and now what I did was I have um, some flowers. And I don't know what flowers these are from because I ended up, I got this great big Hickory Farms at Christmas. And I was running out of room to store my boxes of flowers. Um, these are all Anna Griffin flower stickers. And so I ended up dumping all the flower stickers together in this giant box. And so now I just pilfer through them and pick out what I want to use. So these, I found a whole bunch of different color and style of roses. So this is what I want to go with are these um, roses. And what we're going to do is what we're just going to stagger them in. Um, stagger them in our cone like it's an actual bouquet of flowers. Um, so basically, I'm going to... Okay, so I guess we need a, a center one. So I think I'm going to use this as a center one. Uh, hang on one second. That was John. I had to see if he needed help plowing. It sounds like he's got it, though. There's a bit of snow out there. It is, I guess, still winter. Apparently, it's not spring yet. <laughs> as much as we want it to be. <laughs> you know how it is. So, let's see. Now, if you guys come to a flower, you're like, meh. I want to use it, but the foliage isn't working. Snip it off. That is my advice to you. Snippy, snip, snip. Snip it off. Don't even... Think twice about it and get it done. See, like, right? I know it's so flat right now, but don't worry. I'm using a ton of heartfelt dimensionals. And it's going to make this pop. It's going to be so nice. Okay, so now that's my first layer. That's my backdrop layer. And I think that is, like, looking really cool. So what I need now is I need to get um, some of these heartfelt creations these here and we're gonna start popping everything up, up on dimensionals now um and basically uh we're gonna go ahead and let's see yeah we're just gonna go for it now um yeah because we just need layers so i'm just gonna start popping and um actually i'm gonna go too too deep on most all of these Maybe not all of them, but most of them will be too deep like that. And that's like a half inch a separation gap like that. I'm just going to go like that. And now, uh, yeah, just keep keep interspersing. Keep keep layering, getting interest in here. Um, and then before you know it, this thing is going to be so cool um, and full of dimension. It is like gonna be how in the world did we do that yeah i mean that's what you're gonna think to yourself how did you do that and you're like watching me stack this all up and it just for whatever reason it just works it's so awesome especially with half inch spacing it it goes pretty quick so okay so now i just want to in the grand scheme of things need to make sure that i continue to add pops of color here and there um so that way it's all looking really nice and not just one one color one um yeah not bland with just boring color you you want lots of color for your variations so it's not boring see see get a little red in there a little red and okay we already have that one oh let's what about a pink one here what if we do a little pink one like that okay boom a double stacker on that baby. And if you feel like you want to put hot glue at the bottom when you find placement, definitely do that as well. Uh, see, getting color. So I need some red over here still. So let's grab something that says, uh, hello. Oh, like that, huh? And I'm slowly getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So by the time we get to the front, We'll have something like, uh, something small. Uh, you'll be able to, let me see if I can find something. You'll be able to, like this, you'll be able to have something small at the front. So it'll go like big to small, like that. Big, medium, small, smaller. It'll be so nice. 
but is this the one? <laughs> oh yeah, this is the one. And then when you're looking at it from the side, you'll be able to see all these beautiful like flowers and stuff. It'll be very dimensional. It'll be so pretty. So I like that one there, so I'm going to stick with it. Uh, there again, still use two. Come on. I heard felt what's going on. Oh, that's bogus. I had a couple of the other ones do this to me. I don't know. Oh, farfet nougat. I don't know why they decided not to come off. It's so weird. Um, but that's okay. We got it. So where do we say there? Oh yeah, there. That looks good. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, and maybe pop a bigger one, like something like this in there, and I'm gonna put that up on two. And I'm also going to go ahead and pop a little bit of hot glue. Oh, can I do that? Oh, I wonder if I ran out of juice. I put a double on this one. But I think it actually it actually needs a triple because I'm going to have to go back there. So like that, just triple stack these little buggers. Uh, like so. See, isn't that great? This is looking pretty good. It does use a lot of flowers. I do have to say that. But that truly doesn't bother me at all. Um, I think it's still super fun. And like I said, if something's not working, whack it off. Just get rid of the darn thing. You know? So I'm going to keep... Um, I'm just going to keep um, working my way to the front of this. And, uh, getting my flower arrangement. Oh, actually, do I want this over here? No, I do like it there. Let's see. No, that needed to be a triple. Yeah, some of these will have to be a triple. Oh, uh, because of the depth. But that's okay. See, like that. There. Yeah, like that. Okay, now I'm going to need a red one over there too. I think I'm going to go back to doing something like this down in there. Just if it doesn't work, remember to whack it off like that. Choppy, choppy. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy about doing that. Don't worry. It's all going to look really cool when it's done. And this is just an inside decor piece. This is not anything going out, you know, on my front door or anything like that. That's why I'm just using the amount of adhesive as I am. Um, if you're feeling like you, like, need it to be more substantial and sturdy or something, by all means, for sure, add add more if, if you need it on yours, you know. Um, don't Don't be shy about, you know, obviously using the adhesive and stuff. Yeah. Oh, look how fun that is. I'm adding these in just because they add a fun little bit of flair. Oh, got to get some more uh, dimensionals. Oh, there's one. Uh, I'm putting this one at the bottom. It seemed like it was going to work the nicest there. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, there we go. And let's see, um, let's see, we need some more flowers. Let's see, oh, I love this. Oh, we need red. We don't have any red uh, in the front here. What about, could we do something like this? Is this too big? Oh, did I run out of, oh, spesola. Dang it. Um, oh, darn, my bit of red is gone. Oh, shoot, that doesn't work. Let me get some red and some more dimensionals, and I'll be... Oh, there's some red. Uh, but let me get some more, and I'll be right back. We might have that... Oh, we could use that for the front. Oh, that would be really pretty. Like this, right? Won't that be so pretty? Right there. Oh, that would be nice. Okay, so that would be some bits of red for the front. Okay, let me get some more stuff, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found a few more pieces... And I'm going to go ahead, though, and I'm going to add uh, little 
a dimensional behind this one here because uh, it's kind of wanting to fall back and I definitely don't want it to do that um yeah I don't want it to do that at all um so uh yeah okay so there we go there I definitely don't want it to do that okay so that looks pretty good to me and then I ended up getting uh, I found this one that I'd like to go in the center here-ish. But I I think this is going to not be great. So, oh yeah, that's going to be nice. So we're going to add a few of these onto the back. I think it needs a triple too. Okay. We're actually, I think, almost done. See how quick that? I mean, I... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's uh, maybe not that quick. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Maybe there we could add a bit of life there. Yep, I think I like it. And the nice thing is you can always add a bit of glue at the bottom of these if you want to. Um, add a little bit more stability if you're thinking you need a little bit more help. You could definitely do that as well. Um, so I think what I want to do is I'm going to end with this one here. And on the flower situation. And then stuff the remainder of it with the peat moss. Um, is I think where I want to go with that. Like so. But I still need to add just a touch there. And maybe, maybe a little something... Uh, not that, not that, uh, maybe, uh, I need a couple more. No, that's gonna cover that up. I need this, this one. I really want this one here to be like right here and this one right there. Oh, I like that a lot. Okay, so let me add this here. Oh, whoops, I got a peat moss in there. But that's okay. And a double there. Yeah, I like that, right? That looks pretty fun. And then there was, where'd I, where'd it go? Oh, could I maybe do the other one on this side instead? Could you do the other one like so? And this one here? Mm, no. Or what about just doing this one here? I could do that one there. And maybe just with one. Like that. Maybe one, just one like that. I still need something off the front, though, I think. Yeah, I think that's going to be the nicest. Right? Like that? Right? That, that there. That's going to be pretty stinking fun. Okay. Okay, and that does it for flowers. Um, so we're going to stuff a little peat moss in there. Right? Isn't that great? Like, it's like a legit bouquet just about. I mean, look how pretty that is. Isn't that fun? I know it uses a lot of flowers and stuff, but I I think it's worth it. And it's a really pretty wall decor piece. Um, You don't necessarily have to use this many, but um, yeah. You could probably do it a little bit thinner or smaller or something. But And then I also like the look of this stuff here. It just makes it look like a, like a actual, like, r real, um, like a real flower bouquet, kind of. Um, and then I'm just gonna stuff a little here and there of that, just to make it look a little bit more fun, uh, so to speak. Um, a little more texture and organic, organic feeling. 
like so. Um, maybe something like that. Uh, yeah. Like that. Okay, hey, that's looking great. Alright, and now the only thing I need to add are my little, uh, pearls. Oh, my hanger. Okay, so then there's these here. And we're gonna add... I think I'm gonna do about six of them. Um, okay. You have a little small one there. And then... Let's let's see where we want to put these at, right? Okay. Like so. Aren't these so pretty? These little wedding. These are those little wedding bead decor pieces. Aren't they fun? They just add so much flare uh to things i think they're so pretty um oh the nice thing about using these is you just kind of see where it is you want them and then kind of pull them out a little and then go back and glue them uh and if they're too long just cut them off Preferably not with your uh, good scissors, though. <laughs> Whoopsie. Whoops. See, like so, right? There. Isn't that fun? Okay, so now let me hot glue all these where they're at, and I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, and then on these guys right here, these little bead ones here, they, like are twisted around and so I just kind of I just cut them like where they're joined at at the base here like just snip them off like that and then cut this little bit of bunchy wire off oops um like that and then I just hot glue these out the front like they're little Ivy's dangling down makes them really fun. Whoops. All right, well. There. It ended up getting hot glued to a flower. <laughs> that is A-OK, -okay, though. And, um... I was thinking I was only going to need maybe three of these, but maybe I'm going to need a bit more. I don't know. Like that. And then probably one more back here, maybe. Yeah, right there. That's a good one. You just kind of tuck them in wherever. Like, if you like flower arranging, this is, like, really fun. <laughs> it just it just makes for really fun. I think I'm going to put one more there. Uh, good thing I got a couple of these out. Uh, let's see, maybe right there. And a little hot glue. I was thinking maybe right there. Right? That is pretty cute, isn't it? That is pretty cute. And then uh, if I need some more hot glue, I can add more too. But I think at this point, I'm just going to let it ride. And then, um, right? Isn't that looking great? And then we just need a little hanger. And uh, I'm just going to do a little, this little gem. And this is off of Amazon as well. And just do a little, maybe something about that long, I think. And then I'm just going to put it, I'm just going to eyeball off of either side, straight up from the edge of the cone, straight up, and go right on either side of the cone. So that way, hopefully, it hangs nice and straight. 
So I'm just going to put a dab of glue on the front side of the, the end bead. Go, look like eyeball straight up. So about here roughly. Making sure my this is going in the proper orientation. Like the direction I want it to go in. And then I'm just going to hot glue it over here. Um, No, maybe I'm going to go to the back side of this one here. Yeah, I think the back side of this one is going to be optimal. So maybe here. And where we were going there, but I think maybe here. I think right there is actually ideal. Especially for where I'd like to hang it at. Um, you're not going to see the beaded hanger necessarily, uh, but it is going to look nice nonetheless. And the nice thing about this hanger too is it has all these beads. You can actually technically like ticker tape it like one at a time wherever it looks the nicest. So like, like that. Oh, oh, where are you? Like, like that. You could just ticker tape it depending on where you want it to, where you want it to hang, but... There we go. Isn't that pretty fun? Like, what a beautiful little uh, wall decor piece, right? And it looks so pretty. I think I want to put one, a little bit more glue on this. It's not really wanting to stay down in there. It's it's up too far for my flavor. There. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, but look at all the dimension on that. Isn't that just a hoot? That is so fun. It's almost like... A uh, real bouquet of flowers. Almost. I mean, right? As much as you can make it with paper, right? <laughs> yeah. And then all the peat moss and stuff helps to hide all the, like, the funky dimensionals. And you don't see all the things that make it pop up. But it's still just so lovely with that texture as well. So there it is there. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this um, wall decor piece. This Valentine wall decor piece down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed hanging out. Thanks so much for um, being here. If you could hit that like and subscribe and comment and do all the fun things. Uh, it helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. And until next time everyone, happy Valentine's Day and happy crafting. Bye bye.